Yeah, welcome back to the Sports Bank Zone and we kick things off with football and the UEFA Champions League. To be specific, beautiful music in the background. Match day one on the group stage ended a short while ago. Here are the full results. Galatasaray, Copenhagen ending 2 all. Jude Bellingham getting a stoppage time goal to lead Real Madrid to a 1-0 victory over Union Berlin. That's the third time this season that Bellingham has scored the winner for Real Madrid in the last 10 minutes of a game twice in La Liga and now in the Champions League. Arsenal emphatic 4-0 over PSV. Bayern Munich holding on 4-3 over Manchester United. A couple of goals from Casemiro for Manchester United and of course getting his first Champions League goal for Bayern Munich was Harry Kane. Benfica losing 2-0 to Salzburg. Massive result there for Salzburg. Napoli 2-1 over Braga. Real Sociedad holding last season's finalists Inter to a 1-0 draw. 1-0 as well between Sevilla and Lens. Yeah, let's take a close look at selected matches now, starting in Group A at the Allianz Arena, where German champions Bayern Munich held off English side Manchester United. We have highlights. Bayern Munich, as per usual. Manchester United in the unfamiliar black and white, kicking from right to left in the first half against Bayern Munich in the white and red. Sane for Kane, Kane for Sane. Oh! And right through Andre Onana. That's an awful mistake by the Manchester United goalkeeper. And after a really good start for his team. It's a, a cruel, maybe a heavy blow for the away side. Nine times out of ten, more than that, he would have collected this, no problem. Ah, oh, Musiala, lovely turn. Dalo going with him, Musiala gliding along. Trying to catch inside, Serge Gnabry, 2-0. Yeah, it's all about Jamal Musiala here. Absolutely brilliant run and the foresight to find his man with a well-weighted pass. Having said that, the finish is as clinical as you like from Gnabry. Anana not able to get anywhere near. Bouncing back into Bruno, first time to Casemiro, Rashford, and Hoyland on the turn as his first Manchester United goal. Rasmus Hoyland for Manchester United, who are back in this game. He's where it mattered here, it's not the most fierce strike he'll ever hit. But it's enough. The deflection doing for all right. Manchester United are hoping for something similar. I'm not sure Kimmich with this corner kick. There's some appeals for handball against Ericsson in there. That will clearly be looked at. He clearly hits his left hand. And it is a penalty to Bayern Munich. And into the net from Harry Kane. It's a brilliant penalty. Rashford. Garnacho. Bruno Fernandes to Rashford. Martial. Very nicely done. And scooped into the net by Casemiro. Did ever so well to keep the move going in a tight space. Just on side there, Martial. And on the deck, the poke of the leg. Does the damage for Casemiro? Might we yet have a little shock in this match? A big shock, in fact. Well, Brian would love that to go in, it would have sealed it. His match is tail, and that has sealed it. It's 4-2, and it's all over now. I mean, they've been the better side by some distance for most of this match. By the scoreline there reflects that. 
Bruno Fernandes is going for goal and he's put it in. Actually, I wonder if Casemiro didn't get a touch on that. He did. Yeah, it's he Casemiro. Did. It's his second goal of the game. Yeah, full of incident. Well, that is the end of it. Bayern Munich have won in a game which has had just about the lot. Third successive defeat in all competitions for Manchester United. And I guess if Eric Tenag wasn't under pressure before, he most certainly is now. Let's welcome one of our international football correspondents, Simon Evans, into the conversation. Uh, Simon, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Usually I would start by asking for an overall assessment of the game. Today I want to get right to it. And I want your early verdict on Andrea Nana in the Manchester United goal, not just because of the mistake today, but how he has gone generally since he has joined Eric Tenag's side. Yeah, it's not been good at all. He's going to be under pressure. There's going to be people questioning this signing now because it really hasn't uh, been the kind of solidity you would expect from a top-class goalkeeper. Let's remember, he had a great season with Inter Milan in the Champions League last year. So this is a little bit surprising. A player signed because he's very good with his feet. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of that. And what we've seen is, is mistakes such as the one tonight. How bad was the mistake that we saw tonight? Yeah, I think. I mean, you'd expect any any goalkeeper from from a top flight league to be saving that. I mean, it was it was it was a get down, get your body behind it, save, uh, and he didn't do it. I mean, it was just uh, just very poor. You know, he, he should be saving that. Yeah, he definitely should be saving that. And of course, Manchester United going behind by a goal to nil with that mistake. Um, Simon, at four three, the final score. Does that tell the true story of how this match played out? Not at all. No, it doesn't. It flatters Manchester United greatly because yeah. that game could have easily ended up, uh, you know, in, in a convincing win for Bayern Munich. It was a convincing win for Bayern Munich, really. There's a couple of late goals come in, a little bit of sloppiness and, and lack of concentration from Bayern at the end. But they were by far the better team in this game. Bayern were without their suspended manager, Thomas Tuchel. But of course, Simon, that was no problem because they had Harry Kane at the front ensuring that the team got across the line. Yeah, he looks very much at home there. I mean, I think that's uh, five goals in six games now. And, uh, you know, it was a penalty, but he linked up so well. You know, what we were so used to seeing him do for Tottenham Hotspur, where he drops into deep positions and links up with wide players. He's doing exactly that. And so you started to see him really getting the best out of the players around him like Leroy Sane and Jamal Musali, you know, really looking impressive. Bayern looked good for long stretches of that game. They looked a really good side. They've got good, fast, technical, modern footballers and they're going to be a force in this tournament this year. Based on seeing him against Manchester United, it can't escape us. We have to talk about the fact that maybe Manchester United could have done better to pursue Harry Kane, reading articles about, you know, once you have Harry Kane, you've bought at least 29 goals per season. Do you feel as if Manchester United faltered in really going after Harry Kane and he would have benefited them based on the fact that they've started the season really rotten? Yeah, absolutely would have been a better move for them. You know, I mean, some fans will be turning around now and said, should have used that money that they spent on Onana. They should have used it to get Harry Kane. You could look at other other transfer deals they've done over the past um, and say that, you know, if they'd have saved some money there, they would have had enough for Harry Kane. The big problem was always, though, that Tottenham didn't want to sell Harry Kane to a Premier League rival. Um, but could United have put together the kind of offer that would have made that irresistible for Daniel Levy, the Tottenham chairman? That didn't happen. And he's gone to Bayern Munich. He's doing really well there. And Manchester United look like they're in for another season like the last three or four we've seen from them. Yeah, I was reading an article somewhere that said if Manchester United could have convinced Harry Kane that they would definitely sign him um, come next season when he's a free agent, then he would have held on. But here we are. Now, after a seven-year break, Arsenal returned to the Champions League with a big 4-0 victory over PSV at the Emirates. Bukaya Saka, Leandro Trossard, Gabriel Jesus and Martin Odegaard 
scoring for the Gunners. Simon, Arsenal and their supporters must be pleased with their return to the Champions League. Although a bit ecstatic, it was a really impressive performance. I mean, Arsenal, they look so good when they get that time on the ball and they get into their rhythm and they get into their flow. And they're playing some wonderful football at the moment. But the finishing for all of these goals, that was the most straightforward one, really, from Saka. But pretty much all the other goals are just superb finishes. Uh, and, they, you know, they attack, they counter-attack, but they go in numbers. They're so dangerous in the wide areas. And the finishing, Odegaard has been absolutely superb uh, tonight for Arsenal. Uh, once again, he's looking so, so good, like the player that Real Madrid thought they were signing when they bought him at 16 or 17. Um, but Arsenal, they're looking like a team that could not just back in the Champions League, but back in the Champions League with the intention to go very, very deep. Yeah, and Simon, you would know this coming into this matchup. A lot of talk about Mikel Arteta, whether he knows what he's doing when it comes to the goalkeeper. Again, today he had David Raya ahead of Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, it turned out to work in his favour. But what are your thoughts on what Mikel Arteta has been saying and doing where the Arsenal goalkeeper is concerned? Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I, I, I was to a goalkeeper recently a former premier league goalkeeper who says you always want to know who's number one and who's number two yeah. but the number two always has to have that feeling that if he keeps working he'll get his chance and that seems to have been a little bit unbalanced there hasn't it with to change things so early and then talking about you know what i might change them during the game you know we've got <laughs> two excellent goalkeepers um so it's 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 a little bit of a strange situation um but it i i feel like He's gone for David Rea because he wanted to have David Rea his first choice, yeah. I think. And I think uh, a lot of this might just be not a smoke screen, but, but a distraction from the fact that he's basically left out Ramsdale and brought in his new signing. Yeah, I'm, Simon, I'm not sure how skilled you are at watching two games at a time because it was difficult mon monitoring both games today. But some of the reviews suggest Gabriel Jesus was man of the match for Arsenal. It was such an outstanding team effort from them. I'm not sure if you agree with uh, that call as uh, Jesus being uh, man of the match for Arsenal today. Very good game. He had a very good game and he, he's, really, uh, he's really working out for him at Arsenal, isn't it? And he's looking a much more better all-round player than he did at Manchester City. I think the way they use, use him at Arsenal um, gets the best out of him. But it's hard to look past Odegaard for man of the match. Uh, you know, I have I have two or three screens going on Champions League day, and uh, <laughs> and, and 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 you can certainly see uh, the quality of that finish there from Gabriel Jesus as well, and he looks really happy at Arsenal. I'm glad it's worked out for him because he was a player who who was always seemed to be, you know, do well for City, but never seemed to be established in the team. And he's come down to Arsenal, and apart from some injury problems a little bit last season, he he's looked really really good. Yeah, and Simon, when you say quality, we think about Jude Bellingham, and he's at it again. The young Englishman coming up trumps as Real Madrid edged Union Berlin 1-0. It's early days, but his $110 US million transfer fee from Dortmund is starting to look like a bargain. Oh. Well, I don't know about Bargain for 110 million, but I know he's so oh good, isn't he? He's, 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 he looks fantastic because, you know, he, nothing seems to phase him. He's a, a young guy, and going across to uh, Germany didn't phase him. Um, moving clubs to Madrid hasn't phased him. Okay, so we are losing Simon slowly, so. I'm going to let him go um, earlier than usual and I will turn to Ricardo Chambers so you get to step in for Simon. Uh, Jude Bellingham has really stepped up for Real Madrid. It's as if he got into the setup, Ricardo, and he belonged there all along. He's taken the opportunity with both hands. How impressed were you with the youngster today? Well, again, he's doing the business for Real Madrid, isn't he? Played in an advanced number 10 role today. Um, this is the third time this season, as I pointed out at the top of the show, that he has scored a winner for Real Madrid within the last 10 minutes of the game. Um, so he is finding himself in the right place at the right time for this Real Madrid team. If you look at a lot of the goals, they are not spectacular goals. Um, they are goals that you would expect 
any striker um, at any level to put away. But the key thing for me is the fact that he is finding himself in the perfect positions um, to be able to have these opportunities. Um, and that, I think, says a lot about his quality. We've had a number of discussions about the variety he offers, um, just how much quality he has, not just as a finisher, but as a provider as well. Um, the way he handles the ball. He is just a quality all-round player, Lance and Mariah. Um, I'm not sure, and, and, and I've asked this question before, whether it's sustainable to, to have him in that advanced role for the duration of the season and if he's going to be the man to lead Real Madrid to a title in that role. But at this stage, he's doing a very good job yeah. at it. Yeah, the fact is that you say he doesn't score many spectacular goals, and that might be true. No, but I said the goals have not been spectacular. I, and, I, and I'm speaking specifically to the goals he has scored this season and even Fernandes. more specific, yeah. specifically to the, the three he scored in the last 10 minutes to win the games for Real Madrid. Yeah, okay. but I, the point I was going to make is that whether a goal is spectacular or not, efficiency is the key. And that is what you need as an offensive player to be efficient, especially in the box. You know, when I think of someone like Thomas Muller, who in his best days at Bayern Munich uh, didn't score many spectacular goals, but he, he was efficient. Yeah, uh, Yaya yeah, Toure, when he was scoring a lot of goals for Manchester City, was efficient. He was just efficient. So being spectacular sometimes is, is a side mm -hmm. is a side show. <laughs> yeah, we just need the three points. And today, you know, who was Elu when we did saw him? Did you say him? we? Today when we saw, did you all watch a match? No, you said we needed the three points. No, I said they needed the three points. Oh, they? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I genuinely thought I heard we and it just, I was just taken aback. No, I'm very that, sure. Because I thought you were a that, City fan. That, that would have been yesterday. Should have said we yesterday. I, I think we should replay <laughs> that tape because I'm pretty sure I heard we. Boys. Well, I really wanted to say, viewers, that when we were watching the match today, Jose Lu had a lot of opportunities and didn't capitalize on them for Real Madrid. But we saw the moment Jude Bellingham got that chance in injury time, he was able to steal the points for Arsenal and Arsenal supporters. But on that note, we're going to take a quick break and come back because we have a lot more to talk on the Sports Night Zone. Stay with us.